far as I'm concerned. Uh, first of all, it's a quarry for filmmakers in that uh, it contains the very best of cinematography, editing, lighting, performance, screenwriting. Uh, the story itself is somewhat complex, but it's simple. It's based on the old biblical idea, what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world if he loses his own soul? No, no film illustrates that better. It's the reason that I became a filmmaker. Uh, the first day that I saw Citizen Kane, someone suggested I see it. This is about 40 some odd years ago. I went to see it and I stayed in the theater all day. I saw eight performances in a row. It's the only lesson I've ever had in filmmaking. More importantly, it has influenced so many other young people to become filmmakers because you can see how the, the power of the filmmaking process can set to work to make a very original creation that could not be done on the stage, in a novel, in a painting, in a photograph, in any other medium. Citizen Kane comes from the intelligence, basically, of one young man who was so gifted, Orson Welles, so gifted and so fortunate in his collaborators, specifically Herman J. Mankiewicz, who co-wrote the screenplay, and Greg Toland, who photographed it. And Welles was so conscious of the contribution of his cameraman that he put his director's credit on the same card as Greg Toland. Greg Toland was a great cinematographer who had never had the opportunity to explore the medium before this 25-year-old first-time director, Orson Welles, came along with this idea of a giant newspaper magnet who goes from a poor boarding house that his mother ran somewhere in Colorado, all through a, a, an upper-class education, comes out a kind of a, a, of a spoiled brat, and winds up a dedicated journalist, a fighter for the rights of the little man. He tries to turn that into a political career, and he but becomes corrupted by his own success. And he dies at the end, a lost and lonely man. The ending is depressing. Cain is dead. Nobody in the film knows what his last word, rosebud, means. But the audience finds out at the end. The one thing he remembers, his dying words, reflect his boyhood sled upon which the legend Rosebud was written. And why the sled? Because it represented his happiest time as a little boy growing up with his mother. Very poor. He doesn't remember moments when he's celebrated by the whole world or sitting on top of the world or being successful acquiring all these newspapers. He remembers a moment of pure happiness at his mother's knee, the last time he saw his mother. My God, to reduce the, the entire story of America at that time to one word that resonates with everybody, it's absolute genius. I know that for, God knows, about 60 years, international film critics have hailed it as the greatest film ever made, or one of them. For the same reason that we still listen to Mozart, we still listen to Beethoven, we still go to see the paintings of Vermeer whenever they're on exhibition. Why? Because in a changing world, some things just get mellower and better, like good wine. Citizen Kane is, a great, is like a great wine. William, director of iconic 1970s films, including The French Connection and The Exorcist, has died. His wife, Sherry, the former CEO of Paramount Pictures, told The Hollywood Reporter on Monday. He was 87 years old. Williams won the Oscar for the Best Director for French Connection in 1972, going on to be nominated for the same trophy again two years later for Orkout Holler, Exorcist. Williams' first directing credit came in 1965 with the TV movie The Bold Man, 
but it was 1970s the boys in the band still considered ahead of its times in terms of exploring gay themes in the cinema that began a golden age for the filmmaker other notable titles in williams include 1980s cruising starring al pacino and to live and die in los angeles in 1985 Williams' most recent work as a director was 2017, The Devil and Father. He also had one upcoming film yet to be released. William was married four times. At first, he, he wedded the celebrated French actress Jeanne Morel from 1977 to 1979, British actress Leslie Ann down from 1982 until 1985, broadcast to journalist Kelly Range from 1987 to 1990, and Hollywood film producer Lansing, to whom he was married from 1991 until his death. He is survived by his wife along with his two sons, Jackson and Cedric. May he so rest in peace and thank you so much for watching.